In a prior episode, I gave you a quick tip on how to convert from classic to fluid. We started with the component properties and I described it as you flip the switch to get the people tools to start rendering your component in fluid rather than classic. See, we don't need to start over. We don't need to create a brand new page. We already have a page with all of its content, component, menu, portal registry structure, etc. All we need to do is get the rendering engine to start rendering with fluid rather than classic. And that's just a component property. And then we, in that episode, we went through adding the appropriate group boxes to update the layout, etc. Your typical classic to fluid conversion. And where we left that episode was with some data entry fields that were overlapping each other. And so that's where I want to pick up today. So I have on my screen, I have that page that we were converting. And you notice here when I get to a certain point, the, for example, the shirt, the group box here for shirt, it's overlaying these data entry fields. Now from a, an HTML perspective here, let's take a look. I'm going to inspect and in the HTML, I can see the data entry input field. Oh, even better. You can see the label here for weight. Let's go on to weight. So this is the height field. This is the weight field. And you'll notice the bounding box there, the blue area for the for the weight field, the data entry field actually expands beyond that. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? And we can see that the group boxes for each of the three columns, well, the data entry fields are overlaying those. So the question is, how can you fix that? Well, first let's start off with why are they overlaying each other? Data entry fields in Fluid are all fixed width. You notice by default, they all have the exact same width. And here, let's close this. You can see here in the grid as well, exact same width. We've got a date data entry field, same width. Now that stands in contrast to say a translate value or a dropdown list, which we can see is only the width of the contents of that dropdown list. That's awesome. Uh, but what about these data entry fields? How are they defined at the database level? That's a really good question. I have the page open here in the background and you can see that they are defined as all different widths and those widths are much smaller than what we see on the screen. Here, I'm kind of curious. Let's drill back to the record definition. We can see there's two, there's 4.2, three. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what if we went with a width of five? What if we were to just using CSS, for example, what if we were to just set these to a width of five characters? Let's just set them all to five. I mean, they're different. We've got a two, we've got some threes, and then we have the almost five. Let's just go with five. That seems uniform enough. So what I want is, what I want to know is, is there a style class that we can use for that? Well, let's take a look at the Oracle Deliver documentation. They deliver this or they provide this CSS guide for PeopleSoft Fluid user interface. You'll find that in my Oracle support. And I'm going to look for PSC underscore control. Here I see control full width. Okay, good. And then I see some style classes for height. All right. And oh, here's some for width. So this one here, I see PSC control width, and we see that it, the unit of measure here is EM. EM is a relative unit of measure based on the current font. That sounds promising. Uh, what about down here? We have percents. No, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, make the size of the data entry field dependent upon the size of the group box. I don't think I like that. Uh, pixels. Ooh, that's great, but you know, I think I want it variable based on the size of the font. So let's go back to the EM. Now the EM is a unit of measure typically defined as the font height. Uh, in our case, though, we're thinking width, but fonts today are variable. So it's very hard to pick a specific font width and just say, hey, let's go with that. So let's do the PSC control width. Now, one of the things I find is that the one of the most common issues with fluid uh, when you're trying to apply style classes is misspellings and typos. So here, let's see if we can avoid that. Let's copy out of the activity guide, or sorry, the, the documentation provided here by Oracle. And in my page here in App Designer, I'm going to apply a style class. So I'll go to the Fluid tab, and I'm going to paste in that style class, PSC control width, uh, let's go with 5EM. That's how that finishes from the documentation, but I didn't want to copy the curly braces, etc. Now, interesting thing here, I just want to point this out to you. 
the documentation that I we received from Oracle, it says PS C underscore control dash width. Now we're thinking ASCII characters, ASCII dash, but the actual character stored in that PDF file is a hyphen. It's something outside the typical ASCII character set. So whenever you copy and paste, because remember, uh, typos are the most common issue and the easiest way to avoid typos is copy paste. So what I do whenever I copy paste out of that document is I just delete the dash and re or should I say delete the hyphen and replace it with a real dash. Okay, great. Let's see what this thing looks like online. I'm going to reload. Oh, that's better. Height only allows for two characters, so five is probably too many, but let's just go with the five. I like it. Now that we have it, we know it's working. We want to avoid typos. Again, we'll copy paste, but hey, let's just paste it into all of these. Now, the interesting thing is, and you'll notice this, is the design time doesn't change. Design time doesn't update. In fact, really what we get out of design time with Fluid is containment and order. You know, the containment, what we're talking about there with containment is group boxes and which, which items are contained in which group boxes. You know, basically, what's the parent-child relationship between these items? That's containment. And order is, of course, the order tab. Into which order are these going to appear? Because I could actually flip height and width in the order tab, and they would flip in the rendering to match the order tab, not the design time. Interesting, huh? Well, here, let's see if we fixed it. I like that. I like it. That's better. That works. Let's see. How do they break over? I'm not seeing any overlapping there. That's perfect. Oh, hey, you know what? I see another issue though. Here, let's make this bigger. Do you see the word shirt right there? Yeah. Is it related to the height and width or the neck and sleeve? Well, logically, you and I know, right? Shirt would be related to neck and sleeve. But Bounding box-wise, it's really hard to see the relationship between the label and the data entry fields because, well, it's so far away. What if it was centered? Hmm. Can you center it? Is there another way? Is there something else we could do that might make it more visually obvious that the shirt, the, the fields there, neck and sleeve, go with the label shirt? Is there something else we could do? That's a great question. And let's save that for a future episode. Now, we teach people tools tips like this every week, and we'd love to have you in one of our future live virtual sessions. Check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or even better, give us a call and let us help you develop a training plan for you and your staff. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we'll see you in the next episode.